All right, welcome to our first video back this semester over Chapter 6, Lesson 1. Uh, hopefully uh, you guys are ready to go and you've participated in all the classwork necessary to go ahead and get through this video quickly. All right, uh, we will be working on um, on the notes for Lesson 6-1, and actually a lot of the notes in this uh, first page come from Lesson 1-6 back from chapter one lesson six most of this first page actually comes from that and I, I talked about that in class uh, for most of you um, otherwise this is some new information it might be helpful to go back and read chapter one lesson six also um, and that's where you're gonna find out a lot of this first information about polygons so we will be looking today at classifying polygons uh, this should be the word based typo on their sides and angles, classifying based on their sides and angles, and we will also be finding and using measures of interior and exterior angles of polygons. So let's talk about that. A polygon has some key components I want us to understand. The segments make up sides of a polygon, and where two segments intersect, those create a vertex, and the plural, plural of vertex is vertices. You'll hear me say that quite often. Now, anytime I connect a vertex to a non-adjacent vertex, I get what's called a diagonal. So this polygon would actually have two diagonals from point D. Okay, I could connect D to A and D to B. Otherwise, DC is a side and DE is a side. And then we have special names for most polygons based on their number of sides. The smallest number of sides to make a polygon is three, and those are called triangles. Four sides is quadrilateral, and then you get the rest of the list, which we talked about in class also. Remember that we actually read this as an n-sided polygon. Not just an n-gon, that's not the right way to say that. And so this polygon, A, B, C, D, E, is a pentagon, because it has five sides. So here are the ways to determine if it is in fact a polygon. If it's closed, that means all the sides have to connect to another side. It can only be made up of segments, no curves, and those segments cannot cross each other. Okay, This is not a polygon. All right, because we have the sides crossing each other. So in example one, we should be able to figure out if they are in fact polygons. If so, we should be able to classify. So you, most of you did this in class. I'm going to just quickly show you the results for A, B, C, D, E, and F so that you can make sure those are copied down correctly. Again, for example one, we're really just checking your work. All right, here are those answers. All right, uh, A is a polygon. It's a nonagon. B is a polygon. It's a heptagon. There are seven sides. C is not a polygon, D is not a polygon, E is a hexagon, because it's a polygon, with seven sides, I'm sorry, six sides, and F is not a polygon, again, this curve is not a side. So then further, beyond classifying by its name, by its number of sides, we can talk about polygons that are equilateral, meaning all sides are congruent. We can also call it equiangular when all angles are congruent, and if it is both equilateral and equiangular, we call that a regular polygon. Regular polygons are both equilateral and equiangular. All angles are congruent, all sides are congruent. We can also classify polygons as being concave or convex. Now, the concave and convex definitions uh, really pertain to the diagonals. If a polygon is concave, that means that part of a diagonal contains points in the exterior of the polygon. So we might have a shape that looks like this. That is a polygon. These are all sides. But if I were to draw this diagonal, it goes to the exterior. So that's concave. You can think of it this way. It looks like this shape has been caved in. So it's a concave polygon. And as long as it's not concave, then it is convex. If all the diagonals go through the interior, that means no diagonal contains points in the exterior, everything is always angled outward, then it's convex. Because of the way that regular polygons work, regular polygon is always convex.
If it is a regular polygon, it has to be convex. It cannot be both concave and regular. So in our next example, we are classifying as regular or irregular, and then also concave or convex. And so I'm going to quickly show you these, first by regular or irregular, then by concave or convex. Since we have two different angle markings here, it is not equiangular, even though it is equilateral, so it is irregular, meaning not regular. And then there are no diagonals going through the exterior of the shape, so it is convex. Part B, even though these angles are all right angles, because it is concave, it has to be irregular. And also, we do not have any congruent sides marked, so that's also why it's irregular. This is actually a square. You might have said, oh, it's a diamond. Well, diamond is not a polygon. It's not the name of a polygon. It's just a square turned on an angle. And all four angles are congruent, all four sides are congruent, so it is regular. And all regular polygons are convex. Okay, part D is regular convex. And part E is concave, and therefore must be irregular. This diagonal connecting these two vertices goes through the exterior of the shape. That means it's convex, or, I'm sorry, concave. Almost made a mistake. All right. This is really where the information from lesson 1-6 stops. Now we are in lesson 6-1 when we start to talk about um, the uh, angles formed by tr polygons. So what I want you to have done here, and some of you started to do this, and I know some of you are going to need to correct what you've done, so make sure you're ready to do that. If we're going to draw all possible diagonals from one vertex only in each of the following polygons, that means we're going to pick a vertex. And just for the ease of trying to keep these all similar, I'm going to start with the bottom left vertex. In a triangle, the diagonals connect, or I'm sorry, in, in any polygon, diagonals connect one vertex to a non-adjacent vertex. Well, in a triangle, there's only two other vertices, and they are adjacent. They're next to it already. They're in line. So there are no diagonals in a triangle. In a quadrilateral, however, I do have one non-adjacent vertex to this one that I've picked, so there's only one diagonal I can draw from that vertex. In a pentagon, starting at the bottom left again, I can actually draw two diagonals, and in a hexagon I can draw three. And so this table helps us fill out some of that information. In a triangle, there are three sides to that polygon. The number of triangles formed, well, it's just the one triangle. We'll fill out this other column in a minute. In a quadrilateral, there are four sides, and we ended up with two triangles. In a pentagon, there are five sides, and we ended up with three triangles. In a hexagon, six, we ended up with four different triangles. So you can kind of notice the relationship that the number of sides is always two more than the number of triangles we get by these diagonals. 3 minus 2 is 1. 4 minus 2 is 2. 5 minus 2 is 3. 6 minus 2 is 4. So if a polygon has n number of sides, then the number of triangles you could draw in this way would always be 2 less than n. So we just write it as n minus 2. The sum of the interior angles comes from those number of triangles. Remember that in a triangle, all three angles add up to 180 degrees. In a quadrilateral, since there are two triangles, we are going to take two times that 180 and get 360. In a pentagon, since there were three triangles, we'll do three times that 180 and get 540. And in a hexagon, we do 4 times 180, since there are 4 triangles, and we get 720. So to calculate the sum of any interior angle measures in any polygon, we're going to use this nth term notation, and we're always going to take this number in this column times 180. Well, that means we take 
n minus 2 and multiply it by 180. And instead of distributing, we don't need to do that. We can just write it as n minus 2, parentheses, and then times 180. So that's how we're going to calculate the interior angle sum of any triangle. And so we have a theorem for that. It's called the polygon angle sum theorem. And that states the sum of the interior angle measures of a convex polygon with n sides is n minus 2 times 180, where n is the number of sides. And we're going to use that in our next set of examples. So to find the sum of the measures of each of the interior angles in both of these polygons, we're again using this formula, which a lot of you had already figured out. So in an octagon, n equals 8. So we do 8 minus 2 times 180, which is 6 times 180, which gives you 1,080 degrees. So the sum of all 8 of those angles would have to equal 1,080 degrees. In a dodecagon, remember dodecagon is the prefix indicating that our polygon has 12 sides. So we simply do 12 minus 2 times 180. 12 minus 2 is 10, which would give us 1,800 degrees for that total. So to find the total of all the angle measures, again, you just take the number of sides and subtract 2, and then multiply by 180 degrees. For example 4, we're going to use that fact with the different expressions given for these angle measures. In example 4, we're supposed to find the measure of each interior angle of this pentagon. Now, you'll understand that angle A is expressed as 35C degrees, B is 18C, 30. Uh, C is 32C, D is 32C, and E is 18C again. Now in order to find what each of these equals, I need to know what C is. In order to find C, I need to be able to write an equation to be able to do that. So there's two parts to this. Part one is to express the total using these expressions, and in that case we're just adding 18, 32, 32, 18, and 35C. Giving us a total value of C of 135C. So that's the total expression in terms of C. That's not 135 degrees. Remember that all the angle measures of a polygon are found using this formula. So we can still use that here by understanding that in this case N is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 sides. It's a pentagon. So we do 5 minus 2 times 180 which is 3 times 180, which you will probably remember from the table on the other page was 540 degrees. That means that 135C has to equal 540. So we just write that equation. 135C equals 540. And then solve for C by dividing by 135. And when we divide that we get C equals 4. That means I can plug 4 in for each place that I have C and find these five angle measures exactly. So when we plug in 4, we should get these angle measures for B and E, 72 degrees each, 4 times 18 is 72, and for angles C and D, since they're both 32 C, we should get 128 degrees also, and then when we do 35 times 4, we should get 140 degrees. Alright, let's go ahead and move on to uh, example 5, and I'm going to get you started and let you take some time to finish that. For example 5, it, we have a decagon then a heptagon, and they ask you to find the measure of each interior angle, but they are regular polygons. That means each of these 10 angles is exactly the same measure. So all we have to do is take our total and divide it by n, the number of sides. Which means for the first one we're going to do 10 minus 2 times 180 and divide that by 10, which should give us a total of 144 degrees for each of these 10 angles. And we're going to do the same thing on part B. So when we do this with 7 sides we get a total of 900, which when we divide by 7 gives us 
about 128.6 degrees when we round.